Hello Gemini, my name is Keith Hasbrell. I'm a professional astrologer with uh, 30,000 clients worldwide and over 40 years experience in the business. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this video on your cycles for May and June 2014. I've already done your major cycles for the whole of the year of 2014 from the slower moving planets Mars, Jupiter and Saturn but with this particular one I'm looking at the faster moving planets uh, and uh, this will give you a week by week and a, a couple of months look at the type of cycles that you'll be experiencing in this time from these cycles. So you just sit back and relax now Gemini and enjoy the journey with me. Before I get into your cycles, just a little bit of information to help you to understand the way that it all works, the way that astrology works. I'm very happy to see that you are interested in the uh, science of astrology and this can be a basic introduction to uh, esoteric uh, understanding and the spiritual side of life. After all, if the planets do have impact in our life, it puts intelligence into the whole scheme of things and it means that the planets are not just there as blobs of matter as science says that it can have no impact upon human life here on earth but they are the hands of the cosmic clock some sort of a cosmic clock and that there's intelligence behind the whole scheme of things and that these planets move around in the uh, houses of our horoscope and bring about precipitate events and conditions in our life. So it's very important for you to get a little bit of a grounding on uh, what I'm trying to convey to you here because I'm really into the consciousness side of things and the impact that these planets have upon your consciousness. And I want you to help. I want to help you to understand that there's more to astrology than meets the eye, and to have you want to delve deeper into things like reincarnation because that's all tied in with astrology, and also meditation. That's all tied in with astrology as well, because it deals with the subjective side of life. But just a little bit about the way that the planets work. We are all living in a space-time rule set. We are all creating all the events and conditions of our life. We have all the raw materials there to be able to create this with our attitudes and our beliefs, our thoughts and our feelings, and our decisions and our choices. Through those decisions and choices, we are then brought to the utilization of our three tools. Nobody has any different tools and those tools are our desire, imagination and expectancy. What do we desire to happen? What do we expect to happen? And what do we imagine to happen? This is what will happen in our life. But this is what's happening is that we are all having all of these thoughts and feelings all the time inside of ourselves on emotional and mental levels and these are creating thought forms and these thought forms are added to by repetition upon the same line of thinking. Life never works out for me. I'm a bad person low self-esteem, problems with self-image, and so on and so forth. Shame and guilt and fear and anxiety and doubt and insecurity and life is a financial struggle for me and, and nothing ever works out for me. I'm unlovable. All these different ideas and thoughts that we have and feelings and attitudes and beliefs that we have inside of ourselves, they are all creating these powerful thought forms and these thought forms reside in our aura and they are then triggered off into events and conditions that are in the likeness of those attitudes and beliefs and thoughts and feelings by the movement of the planets through the houses of our horoscope. So what I'm going to do is to tell you about the movements of the Sun and Mercury and Venus and Mars through the two months of May and June 2014. 
so that you get an idea of the type of influences that these planetary movements will have, but realise and appreciate that they are simply triggering off events that are incipient events there in your aura in the form of thought forms. That you are creating your own reality and that all of these thought forms are coming to manifestation in life as conditions and events in your life according to laws that God and Goddess have put into place. So you just sit back and relax now and enjoy the journey with me as we go through the houses of your horoscope and the movements of these planets through those houses of your horoscope in uh, May and June 2014 for you. What I'm going to do for you now, Gemini, is I'm going to lay things out on a timeline for you for May and June. So we're starting at the beginning of the month and then I'll tell you where the planets are during that uh, those two months, May and June. And the planet will remain in that location unless I tell you of another date further along. So there's no change in regard to the location of that particular uh, body, the Sun, Mercury, Venus or Mars, until I tell you of another date relating to that particular movement. So just sit back and relax, Gemini. Now you start off the uh, month of May, Gemini, with the Sun in the 12th house of your horoscope. Now when the Sun is in the 12th house of your horoscope, on a personality level, you'll probably be a little bit self-destructive, probably thinking negatively, worrying about things, uh, not being your best friend, what you might say. So you can have thoughts and feelings that are self-destructive and uh, self-punishing uh, and uh, worries and fears and anxieties and things like that when the sun is in the 12th house of your horoscope. Mercury is also in the uh, 12th house of your horoscope, Gemini, so it means that you're going to have a tendency to worry and to uh, once again fret about things, secret fears will come out of the woodwork and things like that, so just try and play it pretty cool during that time and learn to utilise the wonder and the magic of solitude for study, research and investigation and things like that of a spiritual nature. Venus starts off the month Gemini in the uh, 10th house of your horoscope so there will be uh, social activities revolving around parents if they're alive and uh, there will be a lot more social activities involving people that you work with. It's a very good time for you for business when Venus is in the 10th house and it's very favourable for you for career. So it's good for interviews, for job matters and things like that as well. Mars is in the fifth house of your horoscope to start the month off uh, Gemini. And when Mars is in the fifth house, especially seeing that it's in a retrograde motion, you'll probably find that there's a tendency to dwell in the past. There'll be a tendency to jump into hasty relationships, perhaps with somebody that you've been involved with from the past, or there can be conflicts and tensions with people whilst out on social functions, dragging up stuff from the past and things like that. So when Mars is retrograde, it generally tends to pull your attention towards things of the past. Now on the 4th of May, Gemini, Venus moves into the 11th house of your horoscope and remains there for a period of time. And when Venus is in the 11th house of your horoscope, there's a lot more social activities revolving around friends. Group activities and club activities and things like that will occupy a lot of your attention around that time. There'll also be a love and expression of affection towards other people's children in your life. On the 8th of May, Gemini, Mercury moves into the first house of your horoscope out of the 12th house. And so that's going to be a lot more confidence there for you. So you'll be a lot more communicative, a lot more outgoing, and you'll wanting to be wanting to buzz about and get things done in the uh, period after that. On the 21st of May, Gemini, Mars is uh, moving 
in the, it's still in the fifth house of your horoscope, but it starts going direct. So that will mean that you'll have a lot more energy for the future as far as your social life is concerned. It can make you a little bit impulsive in the following period to jump into a hasty relationship without thinking carefully about it. It can mean that there can be conflicts and arguments uh, whilst out on social functions because of the tremendous amount of extra energy there. It will stimulate your sex drive too from there on. Now on the 22nd of May, Gemini, the sun moves into the first house of your horoscope and it remains there for 30 days. Now when the sun is in the first house, it really makes you feel a lot more confident. It really brightens up your personality. You'll be outgoing in your affections. You'll have a great deal more feeling of power and the ability to commence and start projects and ideas from then on for 30 days. On the 30th of May, Gemini, Mercury moves into the second house of finances, so there'll be a whole lot of activity mentally there in the following period to do with finances, paying bills, getting things done, uh, getting out there and making extra money and things like that, purchasing things and uh, making uh, purchases. So it's going to be a very busy time for you mentally tied in with the financial aspects of life and matters relating to your sense of security. On the same day, Gemini, Venus moves into the 12th house of your horoscope and that's going to see a tendency over the next uh, few weeks to get involved in a secret romantic attachment. You can have secret worries about love matters and you'll have a great deal more love for solitude during that uh, period. Now on the 8th of June, Gemini, Mercury turns retrograde in the second house of finances. Now that means that it's going to start throwing your mind back towards the past. Worries about past bills that are due and, and worries about communicating with people about financial matters and matters relating to security and so forth. So your fears are all going to be regurgitated and you'll have a tendency to dwell in the past to do with financial matters. On the 18th of June, Gemini, Mercury is moving into the first house of your horoscope, still in a retrograde motion, but that will give you a tendency to dwell more in the past about personal issues and self-initiated efforts that perhaps didn't work out right and so forth. So you'll have difficulties at that time expressing yourself and putting your point across for a period of time. On the 23rd of June, Gemini, the sun moves into the second house of finances for 30 days and that will see you throwing all of your personality energies into finances, making money, building on your sense of security and so forth in the uh, following 30 days. And the last one that we come to, Gemini, is on the 24th of June. Venus moves into the first house of your horoscope and remains there for about 30 days. And that will see you being a lot more affectionate, a lot more outgoing in your affections. You'll be more loving. You'll want to be getting out there and mixing with people and circulating on the social side of life. And love can come into your life in that following 30 days as well. So it's a very happy time for you for personal initiatives as well, especially involving the social side of your life. And that's as far as I go for you, Gemini. Well, now that I've gone through all of those uh, things for you there, Gemini, it's time for you now to realise that uh, there's more to the nature of reality than what meets the eye. And I call upon you to visit my website, www.mysteryofsirius.com and submit your birth details there and then I'll do your horoscope chart for you free of charge and I'll send you the link to all of my uh, over a hundred videos and all of my 12 CDs out of my first book What Really Matters on astrology, meditation and reincarnation all of that will be free of charge for you Gemini so I hope that you've enjoyed the journey here and I look forward to working further with you to help you to become more 
of the giant that you truly are. Thank you.